do you think you are? You're not determined by your height or your hair color or your eye color. You're determined by your character, how you think, how you react, how you behave. These are the things that make you who you are. And all of that is made possible by your brain. Your brain enables you to do everything you do every single day. I'm going to tell you about some of the features of the human brain, the remarkable capabilities, and how we've come to know these things by using brain mapping and neuroimaging to peer into this remarkable organ system that lives between our ears and behind our eyes. Now, the brain is the hardware, or the wetware, if you will, that enables everything we do. It allows you to feel love, to feel sadness, happiness, to think, to learn. All of those things are made possible by your brain. I'm going to show you what we've learned using brain mapping and neuroimaging to understand these things. We use magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, to look inside a living individual. We can see their brain, which looks like this. This is a real human brain. It's not the brain with the colors on it, however. The colors don't exist in real life. I've put those colors on to show you that different regions of the brain serve different functions. And this outer part of the brain is called the cortex. And it allows you to, th to feel, sensate, to behave, to move your motor system, and to see and smell and things like that. The relay stations deep in the brain communicate between all these other regions, assimilate all this information, and allow you to understand what it means. This part of the brain shown here is responsible for memory. And it's an important part because we have to remember what we've experienced before so that we can learn from it and do things either differently or repeat things that were done well. Now, the brain weighs about three pounds, which is about 2% of your body weight. And yet it uses up to 20% of the energy of the entire body. So it's not very energy efficient at all. Right now, we're relatively close to San Diego. And in San Diego, the Navy pilots practice landing their fighter jets on aircraft carriers. If you've ever seen this on TV or in any other place, if you've seen it for real, uh, it's a remarkable, uh, uh, a remarkable thing. You see the planes coming down on the runway of the boat, and all of the surfaces of the airplane are deployed to slow it down, and yet the pilot has the engines running full throttle while he's landing. And they do this because the jet may take on new information. The pilot may miss the arresting cable, and they need to take off immediately. Well, the brain operates the very same way. It's constantly taking in new information. And it allows us to react to new things, to take in that information, compare it to experiences that we have had, and to use that information and do something quickly. Let me give you a personal example. And I'll bet most of you have had this experience. You're driving along in your car, and somebody pulls out in front of you. Before you even realize it, your palms have gotten sweaty, your pupils have dilated, your heart rate goes up, and you slam on the brakes. Now, that happens almost before you're even aware that you almost had an accident. Now, obviously, you weren't born knowing how to drive. You have learned this. And your brain has taken this information and incorporated it into the circuitry so it can respond almost instantaneously, within milliseconds. That's a remarkable capability and one that we constantly need to take, care of, uh, take advantage of. So I'm a scientist. Taking a look at brain can be done at a variety of spatial scales. We can look at very small things, such as proteins, or chromosomes or synapses, the connections between nerve cells. We can look at individual cells and circuits. And we can look at the whole brain, just as I showed you in the previous movie. And it allows us to understand the dynamics between different regions of the brain, how the brain is organized. It's a very complex system. In fact, it's the most complex system in our body. We can do the very same thing by looking at function. 
That was the structure. Now let's look at the function. And function happens very, very rapidly, from molecular changes to, to molecules moving across membranes, to blood cells, vascular system in our brain, to circuits, to behavior. In fact, we change throughout our lives. From the day you're born to the day you die, you will constantly learn new things. It's up to you to take advantage of it. All of the different regions of the brain are in connect, uh, interconnected. One region is talking to another. In fact, it works as a symphony with different parts of the brain communicating with other parts to allow us to do these complex things, such as have a conversation with you. This complex behavior of you listening to my words and understanding them is a very complicated a series of procedures that the brain is undertaking for you to understand the words and relate them to things that you've learned before. This part of the brain that you see here is, a very is an area responsible for memories called the hippocampus. And this allows us to retain those memories, to use what we learned some time ago and apply it to a new situation. And that's something we do throughout our lives. If we're trying to create a map that describes the human brain, I have to accommodate the fact that we're all different. Take a look at your neighbor in the audience. You all have a face. You have eyes, nose, ears, and a mouth. But every one of you looks different. I'm looking at all of you. You all look different. And yet I immediately recognize the parts of your face. The brain is organized the same way. Common features, but they're a little different. This is 10 different individuals that you're looking at here. You're looking at a cut through the brain just like this, and you're looking at a big structure in the brain that looks like an eyebrow. I don't need to tell you what that is, but you can see that these 10 people look different. Now what if I tell you this is five pairs of identical twins, the rows being the twins? Okay, so what's the take-home message? The take-home message is genetics isn't the only thing that determines brain structure. In fact, the experiences, the environment, the things that the individual has learned has altered the brains between these two identical twins. And so we can constantly modify our own brains by thinking, by learning from our experiences and applying them and retaining them. In fact, if I look at the brain of individuals from birth all the way up to about 22 years of age, this movie only goes to 18, I can see the fact that the brain is changing at different rates in different regions of the brain each of these regions is responsible for a different function, whether it's speaking on one side of your brain, whether it's moving my fingers, whether it's thinking about something or behaving in a certain way. And so by watching this developmental movie, we can appreciate the fact that the brain is indeed a dynamic organ system. It is constantly changing, and we can constantly take, care, take advantage of that. This change occurs not only up till 22 years of age, but later in life as well. So the brain changes differently as we get older. During the developmental period that I just showed you, you can see that the brain is sort of improving. It's getting more mature. As we get older, we begin to lose cells. We begin to forget things. It's a normal process of aging. And yet it just shows the fact that the brain is accommodating these things by allowing us to perform behaviors in a slightly different way. This little movie shows you how rapidly that occurs from about 10 years of age all the way up to about 85 years of age. And so these things, I think, drive home the notion that the brain is a, dyna a dynamic system, and it allows us to take advantage of new information all the time and changes in response to that. Now, there are diseases of the brain as well. There are neurodegenerative diseases that impact the ability of the brain to function. This is a map of Alzheimer's disease. It's one of the grandest challenges we face as neuroscientists. It's a disease that affects one in three people that will reach the age of 85. So look at your neighbor. One of the three of you will get this disease if you live long enough. This is a disease for which there is no treatment that's effective. We have no way of curing this disease. It's important to me because it's a fascinating disease of the brain, and my mother died of it. 
So I'm very committed to trying to understand the pathophysiology of this disease and to identify potential cures. Even to the lay audience, you can look at this movie here and you can appreciate that the brain is changing in these people in a very short period of time. This is a person with Alzheimer's disease. As the area that you see there gets blacker, the center part, that is tissue that has died. I'm showing you a very upsetting series of, of movies here. This is a comparison between a normal aged person and somebody with Alzheimer's disease. Not to get you upset about this terrible disease, but to tell you how resilient the human brain is. This disease affects people up to 20 years before they show up in the clinic. They've had this disease for up to two decades. And yet they've compensated. They've learned how to apply different systems in their brain so that their behaviors are less affected. It's a remarkable capacity that the human brain has. Regardless of your earlier in life experiences, you always have the capacity to overcome them. So just as evolution has affected our species, so too do we evolve as individuals. We can constantly learn new things. We can overcome adversity. We can overcome mistakes. We can learn from these experiences and apply them to our future. We can always improve. The brain allows us to do all of these things. It allows us to achieve greatness in anything we set out to do. All we have to do is use it. Thank you very much.